Hey guys, welcome back to another video here on the channel. Today we have an exciting one, and that's because I spent the last four days with the 2024 Silverado EV RST First Edition, and today we're gonna go over everything I like and dislike about it. Now make sure you guys stay tuned toward the end of this video, as I am gonna throw my driving impressions uh, behind the wheel of this truck here at the end of this video. Normally I do post them separately, but uh, due to the overall time requirements, you know, time I have available with this truck, I'm just gonna put it all in one video and uh, give you everything I like, dislike, as well as what my overall driving impressions here are found in this video. So without further ado, let's not waste your time and get right into it. Now, as usual, starting out with my likes with the Silverado EV, the first one and one of the biggest benefits of the Silverado EV is going to be the charging speed and the charging performance. Now, even though this truck does not operate at a higher nominal voltage, you know, near or around that 800 volt architecture, GM has been able to engineer this truck basically by combining the two uh, sides of the battery pack and running them in series to uh, essentially allow them to achieve that higher voltage threshold, which means the Silverado EV charges at speeds of up to 350 kilowatts on applicable hardware. Now, uh, not only is the peak speed good on this truck, but the overall charging curve and charging performance of this truck is phenomenal as well as seen and tested by other channels here on YouTube, which means this truck has actually one of the best charging curves and overall peak speeds out there of any electric vehicle currently sold on the market. Now, sure, there are some newer technologies and newer platforms coming out, but if you're looking for one of the fastest vehicles or fa fastest charging with one of the largest battery packs, that is certainly gonna be the Silverado EV in just about every configuration. And of course, the platform mates to this, the Sierra EV, as well as the Hummer EV as well. Now, my second like with the Silverado EV actually has to do with its lighting for a few different reasons. Number one, the RST comes standard with the dynamic LED animated lighting here at the front of the vehicle, as well as the back. Now, this functions during charging sessions as well as walk up and walk away functions. So if you were near the vehicle with the key fob and it senses you, essentially it will greet you via that animation. And that is something you can configure a little bit on the infotainment system as to whether or not you want it on or off. Now the RST also has the illuminated black bow tie, which you know at night when that is illuminated, this truck actually looks uh, extremely unique out on the roadway and gives it a certain type of presence that's really not found on many other vehicles out there. But the second reason I like the uh, LED lighting setup on this vehicle as well is the headlight performance. Now, uh, even though this is just a single projector basically with the high and low beam functionality, uh, it actually is extremely impressive at nighttime. And I think the headlight performance is very, very good, especially the high beams, believe it or not. They go and penetrate way down the roadway. So I'll be interested to check out the uh, you know IIHS testing for these lights, but uh, I think they are actually very, very good, albeit they do seem like they are aimed and uh, you know, focused a little bit high compared to some of the other smaller, shorter vehicles out on the roadway. So glare could potentially be an issue there. Uh, but in terms of its headlight performance and all of the animated functions, I think that is certainly something to uh, you know like about the Silverado EV, especially here on the exterior. Now my third like here with the Silverado EV is actually something that you have to demonstrate from here in the driver's seat. And that is the four wheel steering that this truck has available to it. Now this feature is standard on the RST and I believe the RST is actually one of the only trim levels currently to feature this at the moment. Uh, but that technology is also shared with the platform mate, the Hummer EV, both in the truck as well as the SUV variants, and will also be found on the upcoming Sierra EV. Now, the one of the reasons I really do like the four wheel steering uh, for this truck is just due to the overall size, the length, and you know the physical footprint of this vehicle. The four wheel steering makes so maneuverability and overall you know usability on a daily basis is much much better. Now, I mean this in you know if you have a tight a turning radius, need to turn a corner, uh, even going through certain drive-throughs that have you know really sharp, sharp corners, depending on how they were designed. Uh, this truck can actually handle those without any issue, despite it being a larger vehicle near that of some heavy-duty trucks out there, believe it or not. Uh, the Silverado V with that four-wheel steering allows for a lot of additional capability and just easier usability on a daily basis. Now, continuing on with that, my next like with this truck has to do with its adaptive air suspension. Now, this is again, for a couple reasons I like this feature. Number one is the ride quality is phenomenal. Now, this being a you know unibody vehicle, kind of centrally designed around that large Ultium battery pack, obviously is gonna have a more you know solid feel than that of a traditional maybe body on frame type of pickup truck or SUV. 
but combined with that air suspension at all four corners and the adaptive aspects of it, the ride quality is absolutely phenomenal considering you do have 24 inch alloy wheels on the exterior with you know a kind of moderate sized sidewall if you will. Now, in addition to this, the air suspension has four different ride heights, uh, one of which is an entry exit mode, which I believe it is in right now is its lowest setting, uh, but under normal, you know, advanced, and then the highest kind of off-road drive mode, if you will, uh, that allows you to customize, you know, how you want to use this vehicle on a daily basis. I think under normal driving circumstances, you can only use the normal as well as the slightly raised mode. You can't use that extract or the uh, extended ride mode, if you will, unless you are at those lower speeds with, you know, the overall other conditions met. But uh, between the different ride heights that you can choose from, as well as the adaptive, you know, suspension aspect of it, uh, the air suspension is one thing that you'll surely like. Now, my fifth like here with the Silverado EV RST has to do with its performance in terms of straight line speed and acceleration. Now, this truck is a dual motor design. It is about 754 horsepower and about 760 pound-feet of torque via the wide open watts kind of sport acceleration mode under the drive mode menu. Uh, but even under normal, you know, acceleration in either the normal or sport drive modes, acceleration is never going to be an issue in terms of, you know, what this truck has offered. It's going to be substantially better than that of just about every other kind of full size or even some of the heavy duty trucks out there because this vehicle kind of teeters that line of being a light duty and or heavy duty. Uh, so acceleration, absolutely phenomenal behind the wheel, roughly 4.5 seconds, zero to 60, uh, using that wide open watts mode. And uh, I've never once had an issue where I'm like, I need more power. This truck is extremely quick. Now, continuing here on the interior, my sixth like with this truck actually has to do with a little paddle found here on the left side of the steering wheel. And that is the uh, kind of on-demand regen paddle. But what makes this paddle unique is it's not simply an on and off switch. It's actually a potentiometer, which means the harder you squeeze it, the more regen the truck will give you. Now, I've actually found myself using this paddle more often than I would an on and off regen paddle in some of the other uh, GM or just other manufacturers vehicles out there. It's a very unique design, uh, but you press it up to a certain point, it has kind of a click, and I believe that's when it might start to blend in mechanical brakes in addition to the available max regen, uh, which is extremely substantial depending on your state of charge here in this truck. So uh, I think it's a very interesting and unique use of a potentiometer type of switch, but uh, for on-demand uh, regen capabilities, I think that is a very cool feature. And like I said, that's not something you typically find in a lot of other manufacturers' vehicles out there. Now, my seventh like with this particular truck has to do with the steering wheel as well, and that is the Super Cruise functionality. Now, Super Cruise is standard on the RST kind of fully loaded vehicle, and as is the case for most other recent GM products out there, at least above a certain price point, is that Super Cruise technology typically comes standard on those higher trim levels. Now, Super Cruise, for a number of reasons, is one of the, I would say, leaders in the level two hands-free, uh, semi-autonomous driving world. Uh, because they have, number one, expanded the available roadways and you know conditions in which you can use Super Cruise uh, extensively over the last you know three to five years or so from the first generation when that was released. So uh, Super Cruise now can be used on you know certain divided highways, certain local interstates. You know, of course, all of the main interstates have been covered. Uh, throughout the entire time with Super Cruise, but uh, the amount of roadways in which you can use it are going to be, you know, much more available uh, than that of even just, you know, like I said, three to five years ago. Now, in addition to this, this being a level two hands-free system means you don't have to keep your hands on the steering wheel while the system is active, and it actually has a pretty good job at alerting you as to when you are on or off of an available Super Cruise roadway. Uh, if you're transitioning from one you know, available roadway to another that's not available, it will give you a no good notification and a couple of seconds to react on the vehicle itself. But you know, between the automated lane changes from slow drivers in front of you or you know, uh, basically just needing to avoid certain obstacles, stuff like that, Super Cruise just is a good performance. It's you know gotten better over the years. And I think as one of the leaders, at least in my opinion, from my use case, in some of the kind of level two, like I said, semi-autonomous hands-free driving out there. Now my eighth like with this truck actually has to do something that I think it's a lot of people's favorite or one of their favorite aspects about this truck. And that has to do with the mid gate that comes standard on this particular trim level. Now I've actually taken this exact truck to a local cars and coffee event over the weekend while I had it. 
And uh, immediately a couple of people came up to me that either were current or former Chevy Avalanche owners that said, wait, this is the truck that has the mid gate, right? And I'm like, yes, it does. And they, they thoroughly have enjoyed using that feature on their Chevy Avalanches and is honestly probably one of the features that to them would be one of the more valuable aspects or one of the reasons why they may consider a Silverado EV, uh, either in the RST or future lesser trim levels that have this as an option because they've enjoyed using that feature so much. Now, uh, unfortunately, I'm not gonna demonstrate it here in this video just due to time constraints and everything like that, but essentially, uh, it's a very simple mechanism that, remove, that involves removing the rear piece of glass via these two levers or latches on the roof or headliner, and then there's a couple pull tabs here at the bottom sides of the second row seats. So you can simply pull this right here, seat tilts up just like that. There's another one down here, Seat back folds forward, fold the two headrests down, just like that, folds into the floor, and then from that point on, you're gonna want to remove the second row glass, place it here in its holder on the back portion, and then this via a electronic release will fold down uh, into this area just above the seat backs themselves. So uh, I think you know the mid gate is something that uh, maybe a lot of people out there weren't expecting GM to ever bring back from the Chevy Avalanche but I'm actually glad they did because I could see using, you know, just over 10 feet of interior volume, depending on what you're hauling, extremely valuable. And it's certainly, again, one of these standout features from other electric trucks or just other internal combustion vehicles out there currently offered on the market. Now my next like here with the Silverado EV has to do with something that is kind of found in a lot of newer EVs currently offered on the market, but I think the Silverado does extremely well and that is the available onboard power of up to 10.2 kilowatts or 10,200 watts. Now this is done via several 120 volt outlets throughout the front trunk, the interior, as well as here in the bed itself. And then you have one 240 volt 30 amp outlet here in the bed as well, which brings the total to over 10,000 watts of onboard power. Now, if you look at the actual uh, work truck version of this truck, that is about 7.2 kilowatts. So this RST trim level gives you an additional 3000 watts of available onboard power. And I think that is, you know, one of the reasons that you really do need to consider uh, either EVs in general or EVs that offer the available kind of uh, vehicle to grid or vehicle to load functionality that this truck does right here. Now, speaking of the vehicle to grid function, there is gonna be uh, availability to use the Silverado EV and some of the other Ultium powered vehicles with the right hardware from General Motors and their suppliers to actually power your home and you know uh, do two-way power via the battery pack on board of this truck or you know separate battery modules that you can purchase from General Motors themselves. So uh, I think the capability and the onboard power that you have here with the Silverado is uh, certainly going to be one of the highlights and one of the aspects that you know I would want to consider buying one of these trucks uh, in the first place is you know in case of power outage you need to uh, use power on site at a work site uh, you just want to go camping traveling anything like that you essentially always have 10,000 watts of available power assuming the battery pack isn't at the minimum threshold for it and uh, and, and essentially that could last for days uh, if not weeks depending on your use case. So with everything to like about the Silverado V, you might be wondering, are there any dislikes I have with this truck? And I will say yes, there's gonna be a couple of big dislikes, which we'll go ahead and get into right now. Now, hopefully you guys heard that all right, but my first dislike with the Silverado V has to do with the kind of pedestrian safety noise you hear when the vehicle is at lower speeds. Now, the reason I dislike it is not because of the sound it is or the sound that you hear from the exterior of the vehicle, it's actually because it intrudes on the interior cabin quite a lot actually to the point where you know if you're traveling below 20 miles an hour or so you hear it pretty much all the time and sure the radio can drown out it drown out it a little bit or quite well depending on the volume you have of the stereo but to me a pedestrian noise or you know kind of one of those noises that they're required to have by law so you actually hear the vehicle moving towards you is not something that I desire to hear on the interior cabin at low speeds, you know, typically all the time, unless you have the radio above a certain level. Now, I don't know if that's because that's of where the speaker is placed, if GM is, uh, you know, purposely pumping in that cabin noise uh, into the actual cabin itself or whatnot, but 
Just know that you will hear that noise on the inside of the Silverado V at low speeds pretty much all the time unless you have the radio above, you know, 40% threshold or something like that. Now my second dislike has to do with the panoramic glass sunroof and that's because GM has designed this roof to not come from the factory with any sort of power shade. So yes, that's right, it's just a tinted, UV protected, probably laminated piece of glass it does not have any availability of any shade, at least as of me filming this video. And uh, as you can see, the sun is pretty high in the sky, although we are getting to that time of year where the sun angle gets a little bit lower from its peak. But nonetheless, if you're driving along, you will have the sun beating down on you, ultimately heating up the cabin to a certain degree, especially if it's out in a parking lot or anything like that. Uh, the sun will penetrate that glass and cause uh, you know interior cabin heating as well as glare from the driver or any other seating position, which I will discuss a little bit later here in my driving portion of this video. But the fact that there's no power shade even design into the cabin uh, is a huge miss in my opinion from GM. Now my third dislike with the Silverado EV has to do with the fact that of course this vehicle does not come equipped with Android Auto or Apple CarPlay but it does if you get the work truck trim level of the truck sitting over there. So yes, that's right. This is actually a trim dependent feature on the Silverado EV and that if you get the larger, nicer 17.7 .7 inch infotainment system uh, with the Google integration, of course, you do not have Android Auto or Apple CarPlay, but if you get the smaller, roughly 11 inch infotainment system found in any of the trim levels of the work truck, sitting right over there that does have wireless Android Auto Apple CarPlay in addition to the normal Google integration. So a little bit bizarre in my opinion, wish they had Android Auto Apple CarPlay, but again, this is something that GM has been uh, making ways for within the industry uh, due to them excluding that feature on many of their Ultium vehicles. But it's important to note, not all of them as you know, most Hummer EVs, uh, some of the Cadillac Lyrics, and of course some of the Silverado EVs still do have wireless Android Auto Apple CarPlay for the 2024 model year, uh, but not all of them, including the highest trim level right here. Now my next dislike with the Silverado EV is actually a very strange and very odd one, and one that I wouldn't have expected to uh, critique or complain about in this video, and that is actually the passenger side mirror glass over there. Now inside a vehicle, typically the driver side mirror glass is gonna be a little bit of a wider view or wider angle uh, you know, just how the design of it is so you can see more of the, you know, driver's side itself. But the issue I have here with the passenger side mirror glass is if I zoom in a little bit over there, I don't know if you guys can tell or not here from the video, but that piece of passenger side glass is essentially like using a zoom lens on a DSLR camera. It is extremely narrow field of view and it's extremely focused way back behind the truck to the point where you know, you have to rely on the blind spot detection or you're actually looking over your shoulder to the right to actually see if anyone is in your blind spot, you know, uh, roughly, you know, behind the truck itself. Because I cannot see many people unless they are fully behind my truck uh, via that piece of mirror glass itself. And it's just one of those things where I'm not exactly sure what the issue is if GM intentionally designed it like that, if they didn't intentionally design it and it just kind of came out like that or whatnot. But um, I just think that's a very odd uh, perspective that I have, and it's just something that did bother me while driving the vehicle on a daily basis, and something, again, I have not had an issue with in any other vehicle out there, but for some reason, the Silverado EV, it is just extremely zoomed in. Now, I think my last and final dislike with the Silverado EV has to do with GM's software integration here for the digital cluster as well as the main infotainment system itself. Now, if you guys are familiar with GM products from pretty much the last two years or so, both gas and EV, then this will look extremely familiar. And I will say most of the bugs or glitches within, within the, you know, the Ultium vehicles, such as that a Blazer EV, have been resolved here in this particular truck. But I will say, I think the software implementation still has a ways to go, still could use additional updates over time. And, uh, you know, I think certain features and stuff like that are still buried behind just too many menus to where you have too many button presses. It makes a little bit, you know, harder to use on a daily basis. Now, for example, uh, the drive modes now have their own dedicated tile right here. So if you press that, you go into the drive modes and here you can toggle between all the different drive modes in the vehicle. Now that's not terrible, but it might be nice to have just a physical button here on the cabin that you can just toggle between the different drive modes 
rather than having to go uh, through at least two button presses, if not three, say if you're on this page, for example, with the split screen functionality, you have to return to home screen, drive modes, and then change to the whichever drive mode you actually prefer. And then if you wanna use the wide open watts, that's a different button, separate down here, which will enable it via the you know audio visual tone at the bottom of the screen. Now, similarly, you have all these other buttons over here for power base, one pedal driving, which essentially is the onboard power of this vehicle. And, uh, you know, all of it is laid out, you know, fairly decently, if you will. But at the end of the day, it is just, you know, different button presses. Uh, things are buried behind different menus. And it just would be nice to have, you know, things a little bit cleaner, organized, less button presses. Of course, Android Auto Apple CarPlay integration would be fantastic as well. And, uh, you know, I think it, it just is what it is. Most of the glitches have been ironed out. Um, but I think, you know, I'm with some other reviewers or journalists out there and saying that, you know, this isn't the most simple uh, system to use, but it isn't the worst either. I think it just could use a little bit more refinement over time. <laughs> oh, acceleration via the wide open watts drive mode is very, very quick for a pickup truck of this size and weight. Uh, my overall opinions of how it drives and you know the platform in whole has been very, very positive. I really don't have all that many criticisms or complaints. And of course, the ones that I do have when it comes to its features, options, and design, I did already mention here in this video, so I don't wanna really cover those too much, but I do wanna discuss how the Silverado EV drives and uh, I think overall it is very positive. So with the amount of output via the dual motor all wheel drive system, acceleration is not gonna be a complaint uh, by anybody who drives this vehicle. It's much more quick and more swift than that of an internal combustion gasoline pickup truck. So I think that is one of the biggest aspects I found myself coming back to with the Silverado is given its unibody construction, the battery mounted low in the chassis, the amount of power you have on tap, even under normal acceleration here in the normal drive mode, uh, not to mention the my mode or the wide open watts mode. I think, you know, uh, driving it on a daily basis has just been very, very enjoyable. Then you throw in all the positive aspects of electrification in general, the quiet sound, the, you know, overall refinement you have with the NVH, and it just makes for a great daily driving experience. Now, one of the highlights of the RST in specific is gonna be the adaptive air suspension. Now, we're coming up here to my rough section of roadway that I like to test vehicles on, and the air suspension inside this vehicle, not to mention or aside from the different heights that you have that you can choose from, uh, just provides a very soft, very you know supple ride quality, and even with the 24-inch alloy wheels, with a fairly sizable sidewall still, provides a very good ride quality and I've been amazed at some of the bumps that it's been able to absorb and soak up. Sure, you still still do feel them in most cases if they are that extreme or that harsh, but the average end user I think will be very pleased and very surprised at the you know amount of isolation that you have inside of the cabin of the Silverado EV. Now here we are going over the rough section of roadway and just how stable and smooth and flat the vehicle stays over the section of roadway, it's, it's extremely impressive what the Silverado EV is able to do with that adaptive air suspension. Now, in addition to the suspension, this vehicle also has four-wheel steering. This is another hugely beneficial design element and feature on this truck, considering the overall length, the overall size, and you know, just the typical turning radius that one might have inside of either a 1500 or 2500 heavy duty truck. The four wheel steering on this truck makes turning around sharp corners or just the overall turning radius extremely small for the physical size of this truck. Now I cannot reiterate that enough is just how you know, maneuverable this truck actually is. Uh, if you need to make a quick U-turn, if you need to go through very skinny, small, tight, curvy drive-throughs, anything like that, this truck can navigate it, especially when combined with the 360 surround view camera system on the infotainment screen. I found myself actually pulling that up more often than not if I'm questioning 
where the sides of the vehicle are or where the wheels and tires are currently positioned relative to curbs and everything like that. Now coming back to you know some of the NVH and other aspects, road noise, everything like that to be expected for you know a premium luxury vehicle. It's fairly refined on the inside. Uh, really haven't had any complaints when it comes to noise or any isolation intrusion into the cabin itself. Now, when it comes to some of the uh, drawbacks, again, which I mentioned earlier on this likes and dislikes, the one I do wanna mention here in the driving portion of this video, actually there's two I wanna mention here in the driving portion of this video. Number one is the lack of a power shade on the fixed panoramic glass roof. This is something that right now, the sun is literally shining right at the front edge of the glass into the top of my sunglasses and it's quite bothersome because of the glare it actually provides to the driver. Now, as we change direction here, it's not as bad to the end user, but it's still shining directly through the panoramic glass roof. And under these normal circumstances, I would have the shade closed, assuming I'm not filming with the camera mounted to the glass itself, but normally just driving around. Now, the second dislike I really wanna mention here in the driving portion of this video is that passenger side rear glass or mirror glass I don't think that is literally the correct part or the correct uh, lens type, if you will, on that glass. Now, I'm, I forget if it's normally convex or concave mirrors. I think they're convex. But anyways, that passenger side mirror over there is literally like using a zoom lens on a uh, DSLR camera. It is so zoomed in and so focused way behind the side of the truck that you almost can't even see the side of the truck. I mean, you can on a small portion of the glass, but you can't really see what's in your blind spot or you know, even if you lean forward and do all that jazz, it's, not, it's just not the right glass. And I'm not exactly sure if that's only limited to this truck, a small portion of the production units, or if that's truly how they have shipped every single Silverado EV RST. Because I'm telling you, the EV work truck that I actually sat in and did the side-by-side -side comparison with, did not have that same glass located over there. So that's just something to pay attention to, but for some reason, this mirror's fine, the passenger side one is not. It's like using a zoom lens on a DSLR camera, where normally they are a little bit you know, more zoomed in than the driver's side mirror, but that one is extreme and you know, something I have not experienced in pretty much any other vehicle I've driven. Anyways, getting in onto the interstate, be nice if people would actually let you merge. Anyways, coming back to driving the uh, Silverado EV on the interstate, we'll go ahead and demonstrate Super Cruise. Simply as easy as pushing that Super Cruise button on the steering wheel, it sets your speed at the current speed being traveled and will automatically center you in the lane and let you drive hands-free as long as you're paying attention out on you know applicable roadways. Uh, which like I said, I think this feature is a highlight for General Motors. It's too bad that their base driver assistance technologies is so far apart from the Super Cruise technologies uh, where they don't even offer lane centering or you know, some of those other uh, you know, semi-advanced features, if you will, on their standard driver assistance suite. Now, normally the system will automatically change lanes for you to get you back into the right lane or you know, whatnot, depending on the roads that you're driving. I was very surprised to see that on my you know, normal use case uh, across I-74, but you know, turning on the turn signal, it will automatically check your blind spot for traffic and uh, automatically change lanes. And it will even pass cars for you if you're coming up on a slow vehicle. And again, as long as the lane beside you is free. You know, I think wrapping up this portion or the end of my likes and dislikes with the truck, uh, the Silverado EV is truly another, uh, I guess, technological, advancement from General Motors. Of course, that was first seen in kind of its halo product, the Hummer EV and the EV SUV when it uh, first launched a couple years ago. And I was actually lucky enough to get, you know, some of my first hands-on impressions of the Hummer very early on for the 2022 model year when the truck first launched. And I was extremely impressed at, you know, what GM was able to accomplish. Now I will admit, the driving impressions that I had of the Hummer still kind of stay true to this day, but I think the Silverado EV does things way better than the Hummer EV when it came, when it comes to the you know ride and handling, the you know overall feel, the chassis, you know stuff like that. Even though they do share a lot of the same components and you know are both based on the Ultium platform, I think the Hummer is more kind of like a 
a niche vehicle, uh, more off-road capable, certainly. And I think some of those, you know, minor differences do translate into a fairly moderate difference uh, feel behind the wheel. So I've enjoyed driving the Silverado EV RST much more than that of, you know, spending a couple days with the Hummer EV SUV uh, that I actually did last year. Um, so I think that is basically what my overall thoughts are going to be. Of course, as we know, the Silverado EV uh, and all trim levels as of me filming this video is still going to be fairly expensive and is certainly not going to fit the bill for everybody out there. So you do have to take that into consideration, the mid $90,000 price point. But when a truck like this gets, you know, well over 400 miles of EPA estimated range and real world range out there uh, via testing done, YouTube charges as quickly as it does is you know as nice and as capable as a full size or even heavy duty truck gets these days with the integrated mid gate which gives you uh, i think just over 10 feet of uh interior room from the tailgate all the way to the back of the center console here um i think you know all of those factors considered really still give me a very positive impression and opinion of this truck again even though it costs $96,000. Um, you know, I just think it does everything well enough or, you know, extremely well in some cases that it takes kind of the full size electric truck to the next level upon mu much of the other competition currently available. Now, if you've seen some of my other Ultium EV product reviews out there, such as Blazer EV and Equinox EV, you'll actually know that. I have kind of the opposite opinion, especially of Blazer EV, because that vehicle, you know, especially at its initial launch pricing, came in pretty, you know, around that $60,000 price point and really didn't offer anything that was above and beyond that of the competition. And in, in some ways, it was less than that of the competition for its range, its, you know, efficiency, the power output. The technology was extremely buggy, which here in the Silverado EV, I'm glad to say that they have fixed a lot of the bugs and you know stuff with the software package, even though I still it's not my favorite out there. But I think the Blazer EV was simply kind of a fumble from General Motors when it came to their first mainstream Ultium powered EV on the market, where this truck right here, I'm I'm probably with a lot of other journalists or media out there that would say that this is no doubt the best full-size electric truck currently offered in the market for a number of reasons. I mean, sure, does it not do, uh, sure, does it have some drawbacks or some negatives? Yes. But I think when it comes to range, efficiency, charging, you know, feature set, comfort, comfortability, um, you know, everything like that, I think this has to be at at least tied with the top, if not, you know, exceeds pretty much all of the other competition out there. So I think that's pretty much where I'm gonna leave this video. And again, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video and or found something helpful as usual. If you did, make sure to hit that like button below, subscribe if you haven't already. Let me know if you have any additional questions and or comments about this particular truck down in the comment section below and I will do my best to answer them. If you guys wanna support the channel even further, make sure to check out the Amazon affiliate link as well as the channel memberships which give you at least hours, if not days, early access to most of the full length, full form videos that I post here on the channel, uh, including this one that you guys are seeing right here. So uh, if you wanna check that out, make sure to do so. I will have a link down in the description below. And of course you can uh, hit that little join button next to the subscribe button if you guys haven't already. And a huge thanks to those who are already supporting the channel via channel memberships. It really is much appreciated. But uh, like I said, let me know your thoughts and opinions on the Silverado EV RST down in the comment section below. And as always, hope to see you guys in the next one.